Hello folks, this is Benton Gray again from Dream Reborn. Uh, I am recording a, another tutorial on, on modding for uh, any of you out there who want to get into the process. Uh, so in my first tutorial I covered some of the basics of using FF Edit, the different programs you need, and uh, sort of you know what you needed to get started. However, I realized that I forgot something pretty important. So uh, I taught you how to create a mod and how to add characters to it, how to change meshes and skins and all that good stuff, and I forgot to tell you how to actually uh, play it, which is sort of the important bit. Uh, so uh, here you see my uh, Freedom Force folder, you see all, you'll see all my uh, mods in here. Some I've made, some uh, are the work of other excellent folks in the community. So for the test mod, I had you copy uh, FFX3, and you'll see I've got a copy of the folder right here. Uh, so what's missing is a shortcut that can actually run that mod because if you just copy another mod uh, as a base, whether it's one of mine or FFX or whatever, uh, you're going to get the shortcut that will open that mod. Uh, or if it doesn't find the right data path, it could just open the vanilla game. That's what a lot of folks will run into. So uh, to fix that, here's how you do it. Uh, you just copy a shortcut from any mod that has one. Uh, so the FFX1 is a good uh, place to begin. And you paste it into your mods folder. We now rename it whatever you want. Yeah, you know, just here's the simple alternative to FFX. Right click and go to properties. So here, what you need to change is this box that is highlighted, target. Now, uh, Make sure that the data path right here it matches your data path. Make sure it's pointing to wherever your Freedom Force directory is installed. Uh, but the uh, bit that will make it point to your mod is here at the end. So this line of text, you'll need uh, the hyphen, game, space, your mods, name, the very specific name matching your mods folder, and then space, hyphen, log. So if this is going to be uh, for the DCUG, I would do that. For Marvel Adventures, I'll do that. But whatever it is, uh, make sure that you have uh, the name that matches your mods folder. Uh, also, double check that the starts in uh, line matches your Freedom Force directory. You'll see that FFX starts in the FFX folder. Uh, that's, that's fine. Um, you only need to have this pointing to your main Freedom Force directory, so you could actually just have that and it should work. All right, so uh, that's how you create a uh, uh, shortcut that will actually launch your mod. So uh, <clears throat> that aside, uh, today we're going to be talking about how to actually write uh, a Freedom Force adventure, how to create a story. Uh, we're going to do the first part uh, with this tutorial, which is creating a, uh, an easy script adventure. So I, show, I showed you how to get easy script and uh, how it comes with FFX, and how to get easy scripts editor, which is easy script edit, the very cleverly named editor, uh, and uh, today I'll show you how to use it. So uh, I told you to put it somewhere in your Freedom Force directory to make it easier to use. I put mine in my help folder so that it's sort of uh, in a place that I don't have anything else that I need uh, for the most part. Uh, and uh, it's in this folder. I open easy script edit, and I've actually already got it open down here. But uh, <clears throat> don't need it open twice, I suppose. So here you'll see uh, the editor. And uh, you'll, uh, if you've got Windows 10 like I do, you may find uh, that when you open it, the uh, highlighting won't work. You'll actually be highlighting things, but you won't be able to see it. If you run into that problem, just shrink it and uh, bring it up again, and it should highlight properly. But so this is the editor. Uh, what EasyScript does, as I sort of described it a little bit uh, in my last tutorial, is it's essentially a, uh, a bridge between Python coding and those of us who don't know Python coding. Uh, so uh, Python coding requires you to learn Python, um, and it was something that I found a little difficult when I tried to do it years ago. Uh, and uh, one of the fantastic members of our community, a guy named M25, created EasyScript uh, to sort of provide a simple language way to code. An easy script takes uh, sort of these simple language uh, commands and ties them into the complex Python commands that actually create 
uh, emission. So um, let me, we'll just start with something new and I will sort of show you how this works. So at the top, you start with the story uh, in your blank page and uh, you can name it whatever you want, but uh, here's a rule of thumb for everything that you're doing in any Freedom Forest modding. Use simple names, use short names, and use names that don't use special characters, that don't uh, have uh, any, uh, that don't share uh, words with other, you know, pieces of your modding. So uh, if you're working in a DC mod and you've got Batman as one of your characters, don't use Batman's name as your uh, story name or as anything else because uh, those kinds of things can cause problems. It can confuse the script. So I like to use uh, simple names with a number scheme and uh, you know make it something that I can sort of tell at a glance what it is, but that doesn't run the risk of messing anything up. So for this one, um, it's a Green Lantern campaign. Uh, so I'm going to call it uh, 01 GLC. Uh, 01 Green Lantern Corps. Uh, that's the campaign that I'm creating, and uh, that'll be the name of this particular story. So, uh, but you can have those sort of named whatever you want. Here you'll actually write your script, and here you'll see some examples of what this actually looks like. And I'll be putting one together as we talk. Uh, but uh, in general, what I like to do is I like to work with a script that I've already created, uh, because one, it saves time. I just take a script that's doing sim similar things to what I want to do. Two, uh, I already know that script works. And so I can just take what I already know works and then put new dialogue in it or change things around slightly, change the order, you know, change the encounter types. Um, and it, uh, I find that a good way to work. Uh, you guys are welcome to use any of my own scripts, any of my own easy script uh, missions uh, to uh, create your own based on. Just give me credit if you're doing that. But uh, that's you know a good way to work that sort of takes a lot of the pressure off um, and can uh, make this go a little quicker and a little bit more certainly, you know, a little bit more steadily. So uh, let's talk about the editor itself. Before you do anything else, click on configuration. And if this is the first time you're opening it, you're going to have to fill in all these data paths. The first one, you know, just make sure it's pointing towards the mod that you're working in. So today we're working in the DCUG, my DC Universe mod, and uh, I make sure that my data path is correct for my installation and that it's pointing to the mod folder. Uh, the language directory, this uh, you can uh, put this into your English folder uh, in your mod, uh, put that directory in. However, uh, you don't necessarily need to bother with this because this, uh, one of the uh, features of EasyScript Edit is that it can automatically generate the uh, language files for the missions that you write. However, there's a bug in it and it tends to uh, in, uh, introduce errors into those language files, which causes the game to crash. So I would say it's not worth uh, the uh, ease of use this provides, uh, so just skip that step. A uh, hero file directory, you can actually point this to your hero file directory and then uh, EasyScript will recognize hero files that you call in your scripts, just like it will built-in characters, which is nice. Uh, map file, you point this to the map that you're using for your mission. At the moment, um, this is not what we're going to use. After I create the map, we're going to come back and uh, do that step. So, uh, But get all this set up with the proper data paths. This one is the most important one, the key one, because uh, that uh, will populate all of these fields and give you access to all the stuff that's in your mod, all the characters and all the objects and everything else. You can, of course, navigate to uh, those data paths by using these choose buttons. So uh, <clears throat> that's our first step. Next up, we actually have to build our uh, mission. Now, let's look at one of my finished missions over here. You're going to see a couple of things uh, in addition to the text that creates the actual stories. Uh, you're going to see these and these, these pound symbols. Whenever you use a pound symbol in EasyScript Edit, it says to the editor and to uh, EasyScript that everything that is next to that is not code and just ignores it. So uh, you can use that to put in notes to yourself and to create some organization, some scaffolding 
from a uh, four-year mission. I like to use uh, these symbols <clears throat> and these uh, sort of lines to make my missions easy to read. You always want at least one space between uh, the beginning of the story and the uh, and before the beginning of the story and after the end of a of a uh, encounter. So what those encounters are, uh, these are the different pieces that make up your adventure. Uh, they, they make up your mission. These are uh, the things that will happen, the story chunks. And uh, if you look over here, you're going to see a list of all the different encounters that are built into EasyScript. These are all the things that are already formatted. All you have to do is click on them, and they'll throw, uh, they'll uh, pop up over here with uh, blanks to be filled in for everything that they need. But like everything you need to actually make this function. Uh, in terms of scripting, is there under the surface, already referenced by that encounter type. So uh, most of these are going to be pretty uh, self-evident. <clears throat> you know, things like fight, well, that's just a fight. The characters that you spawn there will wait for your heroes to show up and will try and fight them when they do. Hunt, well, the villains that you put in there, or the minions that you put in there, will hunt your characters. Uh, disarm bomb. There'll be a bomb that will go off in a certain amount of time if your heroes don't dis uh, disarm it. Rescue ally, rescue cage, rescue fire. All of these are pretty self-explanatory, but if you have any questions, if you click on them, you'll find a description. You'll find a list of the various options that are available. So, uh, for our Green Lantern story, what's going to happen is we have manhunters who are attacking the lanterns, and uh, our uh, heroes Hal Jordan and Guy Gardner are going to show up and uh, try and rescue some captured Green Lanterns. So uh, let's start with a rescue caged. They'll f have to find a uh, Green Lantern hidden cage. But before we actually put that one in, I like to start my missions with an introduction cutscene. Uh, or rather with a, uh, yeah, well, uh, a cutscene that is used as an introduction. So you go here to the encounter type uh, cutscene click on it and it'll pop out here with uh, the bones of it and the stuff that can be filled in. So encounter name works just like your story name. I like to use, once again, simple names uh, with usually a numbering scheme that makes it easy for me to tell where in my story I am and sort of what's happening. So I could call this Robot1 and then my other encounters will sort of follow that name scheme, but you can name them whatever you want. Uh, I like to give them capital uh, letters to help me differentiate at a glance between the titles and other parts of the script. Uh, allies. Well, <clears throat> who do we want to put in as the ally that we're rescuing? Uh, each of the different encounter types will have these different fields that give you options about sort of what you want to put in there. Anything that has enemies will give you options in terms of enemies. Anything that has allies will give you options in terms of allies. You can put pretty much any category of character or object into an encounter that you want, but some of them require those. And so whatever is required or are the sort of common options will show up in uh, the encounter. So for example, the hunt encounter will have the option of villains or minions. Uh, the uh, rescue ally will have, once again, allies. Uh, but uh, if I want to, I could add allies to this. I could add an item or an object. Those things wouldn't serve any, um, you know, uh, story purpose, any purpose in terms of the scripting, but you could put them in there as props or uh, to have uh, things to sort of liven up an encounter. Uh, now, our cutscene up here. This is just a cutscene. This is just something that will get our mission started. And I like to start with a cutscene because uh, this will let me know right away if the mission itself is starting uh, or if there's a problem with something else. So uh, if the mission loads and the encounter cutscene plays, because cutscenes are, are pretty simple, they're not likely to cause problems, they're not likely to choke on anything. Um, then at least I know, okay, I haven't messed up anything in terms of like the mission setup. And then if something doesn't play later on down the line, it's easier for me to isolate where my script is breaking. Because even though EasyScript is much simpler than Python, uh, if you're a goofball like me, you can make mistakes as you write and misspell a character's name or you know forget a comma or something like that, and that can cause things to break down. 
So I like to start with the, uh, the opening cutscene, and uh, I uh, will use the start cutscene, which is uh, each uh, type of cutscene other than the cutscene itself, each type of encounter rather, other than the cutscene itself, has at least three different types of cutscenes. You see down here in the hunt encounter, there's an alert cutscene, a start cutscene, and an end cutscene. And these do pretty much exactly what you'd expect. The alert cutscene is what plays as soon as the encounter starts. The start encounter, the start cutscene is what plays as soon as your characters reach the encounter, when they get close to a character or an object in that encounter. The end cutscene is what plays once the encounter finishes. But if you look through your list over here, you'll see that a lot of these have other cutscenes that are optional. You can use as many or as few as a few of these as you want. You can have absolutely no cutscenes in your mission. It could just all be action. Or you could use every single cutscene that's optional. Uh, I tend to use, you know, sort of whatever seems appropriate. Uh, I have, uh, you know, some stories that are heavier in cutscenes and some stories that are lighter. But the cutscenes themselves, these are the uh, moments in the game where things go into the letterbox uh, and characters talk to each other and you can sort of cut around in camera and do sort of neat narrative things. For our opening cutscene, uh, we've been talking about the encounters over here, but that's not all that this, this uh, piece of the editor can do. If you click on this drop-down menu, you're going to see some of the other cool things that EasyScript Edit does for us. Uh, we can uh, choose cutscene commands, we can choose characters that are available, we can choose hero files, we can choose objects that, sh that we could you know, put in buildings or uh, bombs or whatever else we wanted to, uh, and even markers available in a map. So at the moment we want cutscene commands. So uh, these are some of the, these are all of the various commands that we can call in a cutscene. Uh, if you want to have that letterbox, uh, you know, uh, the, the sort of game stops and you move into the full cutscene, you have to start with a camera command. So in this case, we'll start with a camera command. We just click over here, it shows up here, and all we have to do is fill in the blank. So we'll start with Green Lantern, who's Hal. Now note that uh, I just typed the name because I know his name, but if I'm not sure about it, I can come over here to Characters. And uh, I can uh, find him in my list. Here's all the Green Lanterns, all the alien Green Lanterns. And here's Green Lantern himself. If I click on that, it'll drop his name exactly as it is in, easy, in uh, FF Edit into your mission. Now note that whenever you do click on here, uh, it adds the character with a comma because it's just sort of setting it up for you to do a list. Um, if you leave it that way, the script will choke, so at the end, you need to make sure you have no commas or spaces. Okay. Having uh, chosen our character name, uh, we can continue with the uh, cutscene. So we have all of these cutscene commands we can draw on. Uh, what we're probably going to use right now is an unfade command. Now, uh, why are we unfading when we haven't faded? Uh, EasyScript is fantastic and it works great, uh, but there are a couple of places where it can be a little bit weird, and this is one of those places. Uh, usually, uh, EasyScript uh, is, I think, designed to unfade automatically, but it's always a good idea to put an unfade command at the beginning of your first cutscene. This is another reason I use a cutscene before any other encounters, uh, to make sure that the game unfades properly and that you can actually see your screen and interact with it. If that doesn't happen, then there's nothing you can do and your mission can't go anywhere. So, um, but uh, after we unfade, we can uh, add animations from characters. We could have uh, characters do all kinds of things. What we'll probably do is have Hal speak. And you'll see Writing dialogue is super easy. It's just the character's name, says, comma, and the dialogue in quotation marks. And we can have uh, Guy answer him. We can go back and forth. We can have uh, our characters actually do some emoting. Uh, we can use animations. So we have 
Green Lantern, punctuate his uh, speech with uh, an animation. Now, if you ever use an animation, make sure that it's an animation that your mesh, your character's mesh actually has. I have certainly uh, had uh, scripts seize up on me and, and fail because I have used an animation that the mesh doesn't actually have. So in this case, we're going to be safe. I can always use character tool to load up the mesh and look at it or go into the mod and check the different animations that the character has. But here I'm just going to use one that I know he has because everybody has it, just arranged, uh, simple ranged animation. Uh, so we can uh, set lighting for our uh, cutscenes. We can change lighting uh, between missions. We can change lighting at the beginning of a mission if we want to change what the map has. We're just going to use the norm uh, lighting of our map. We can also play music before we do anything else. We could start some music to uh, cover this, to uh, provide a soundtrack for this adventure. What do we use there, though? Well, at that, we need to open up FF Edit. And we're on the DCUG, so I'm on the right mod. I come over to your resources. I come down to, you guessed it, the music section. It's not under sounds for this, it's under resources. And you'll find a listing of all the music that uh, is in uh, your game. Now you can add new uh, music or new other resources here by uh, copying one of these or adding new and renaming it and pointing it to uh, the new file. You can add new uh, music in your mod by going to your mod, the sounds, music file, and adding files there. I've actually got a lot of uh, these are from the first game in here to give me more options as I create my mods. So uh, we just find the music uh, file that we want. We'll say we'll use this one. I copy the name because you have to have the name exactly. For all of these things, if you ever ever have something that's misspelled, the game won't recognize it, obviously. So uh, now that music will play until uh, either I do something different or until the uh, mission ends. So if I put in a new uh, piece of music, I'll change it, but otherwise that's going to accompany me through the rest of the mission. I can also do things like add arrows to objectives. So uh, down here when um, villains spawn in another encounter, I could have arrows spawn on them, or put arrows on allies or things like that, or a bomb to give my players some direction. Uh, there's another command here that's worth talking about, uh, and that is cinematic camera on. So I've done a little bit of dialogue, I've put in some music, and now I'm going to switch my camera angle a little bit. I'm going to make the camera go from Guy to Hal. So, uh, what's the difference between camera on and cinematic camera on? Well, camera on gives a basic sort of isometric looking down view on the character that you've chosen. Cinematic camera is a little fancier. Uh, it's something that's designed to have a little bit of intelligence about how it focuses. It gets uh, sort of down on the character's level, and it will attempt to pick out um, something interesting to put in the frame with them. Now, it will usually pick another character or maybe some background or something like that. Or you can specifically say on uh, one character to another character, and then it will try and put both of them in the frame. Now, uh, this is a way to sort of give yourself some uh, sort of neat camera moves without having to specifically say, <clears throat> you know, pointing the camera at these particular coordinates. Uh, and uh, it is uh, a nice way to... Uh, add some variety. I like to cut back and forth between regular camera and cinematic camera to uh, sort of put some visual interest in my cutscenes. Uh, it's also really useful, the cinematic camera command is, when you have flying characters or characters who are on top of buildings or who may end up in those situations in a cutscene. Because of course, um, a lot of my cutscenes will happen sort of wherever a player happens to be when they trigger an encounter. Uh, that means that, uh, you know, a character may be on top of a roof. The regular camera command oftentimes won't find them properly there. You'll only get their feet. If you use cinematic camera, it'll do a better job of putting them in the frame. So uh, you can do all kinds of different, different stuff with your, uh, your cutscenes. And uh, this gives us 
a uh, sort of opening cutscene that will set the stage and sort of give our reader, uh, our players a little sense of, of what's going on, what they can expect. So, <clears throat> that finished, we can go on to the rest of the adventure. Our uh, cutscene will set the stage. It will also give us that sort of uh, check to make sure that the mission is working properly. And our next encounter, well, we're actually going to do a couple of different things with our next encounter. So uh, one thing that you don't see that uh, Easy Script doesn't automatically put in these uh, encounters is this command, next. Uh, this is just telling your uh, story where to go after this encounter ends. Now, um, normally it will just go chronologically, just from top to bottom, uh, one to the next to the next. However, next lets you jump around. It lets you branch out. It lets you create conditional uh, missions and uh, objectives. <clears throat> so a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this to uh, make your missions more dynamic and interesting. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to throw a little bit of uh, complications at my players. So their next encounter is going to be Robot 2 and Robot 3. So Robot 2 is going to be this, a simple hunt encounter. I'm going to spawn some minions, and they're going to hunt down my heroes wherever they are on the map. At the same time, my heroes are going to have an objective that's going to take them uh, somewhere else and try and accomplish something different. And so they'll have to deal with the fact that they've got enemies chasing them and that they have an objective to, to accomplish. So I name my encounter. I have the type that's hunt. And now I have a choice between villains and minions. I can put both in there. I can put either. Now, we talked about, while I uh, talked uh, about... Uh, of edit the different template types, the different types of objects that Freedom Force has. Uh, minions and villains and heroes and buildings and all kinds of things. Uh, these categories correspond to those categories uh, in general, but they're a little different. So uh, whereas a villain in FF edit is a sort of named character that uh, is sort of a bigger threat and minions are the faceless masses, they serve the same role in easy script but they don't have to correspond to the template types you can put any character in any of these categories you could put green lantern in as a villain you could put dark side in as a hero you could put uh you know lois lane in as a minion uh any character you want can fill any role the i the ai they have assigned to them may mean they don't do particularly well in that role but you can put them in there and the game will treat them in that way uh, so I could use my Manhunters, who are my faceless mass masses, as my villains, or as my minions. Uh, now I come down here to my list. I don't really need villains in this encounter. In Easy Script Edit, villains are going to be the more significant threats. Uh, and they're also the more uh, concrete forces, because uh, if you have a villain entry, uh, and you have, you know, bad guy one, bad guy two, and bad guy three, uh, those three characters will spawn and it will only be those three characters. If instead you have, you know, bad guy one, bad guy two, and bad guy three, three different templates uh, in minions, you'll get uh, a uh, number of characters that will adjust depending on the difficulty of your player's uh, campaign. So if they're playing on normal, it'll be X number. If they're playing on hard, it'll be Y number. And if they're playing on very hard, it'll be Z number. And it'll grow exponentially. Uh, what you do with minions by listing different characters is you create the proportions in which they're spawned. So if I have thug with bat, thug with gun, and I have two thug with, thugs with bat and only one thugs, thug with gun, uh, then maybe on normal I'll get two and one but on uh, very hard, I would get, um, you know, four and two. So uh, that's a fun way to add some scaling for difficulty uh, for your players without you having to do any extra work. In this case, like I said, I don't really need villains because uh, they they don't have to do anything special. They don't even really have to have any uh, dialogue, really, not any significant dialogue. So I'll just come over here, I'll find my Manhunter robots, I'll add them to the list, I'll bring that up, 
and now um, this will spawn them uh, and send them hunting heroes. Now, uh, I could just go straight to my next encounter, which is going to be a disarm bomb encounter. Robot 3. But what would happen if I did that is this would jump to uh, this encounter and it would spawn it. But after this one ended, it would also jump to that encounter. If you don't have a next condition, it automatically goes to the next encounter. So here, we don't want anything to happen after this, so we'll just put next none, and then it won't start the, the next encounter twice. Uh, note that we have all of these different cutscene options. We don't actually need most of them, because this is just the bad guys hunting us in response to what happens in the first encounter. We'll just throw in a little bit of flavor dialogue. Manhunters are not terribly creative. Uh, so that is, you know, only we'll give Green Lantern a response. <clears throat> now, notice that I didn't include a camera command. Uh, because I didn't do that, this actually won't start with the letterbox uh, cutscene that stops the action. The action will continue, and this will simply play over it. <clears throat> so, uh, let's talk about our next encounter. Uh, we've got a lot of different options here. Uh, oh, also, before I forget, note how I did the dialogue here, how I did the naming. We use all of the characters' names up here. You have two different options, well, three different options, when you're calling character names and calling uh, characters in uh, EasyScript. You can use their template names if you want to talk about a specific character. So, since Guy Gardner and Green Lantern are my only characters, my only heroes in this adventure, I just use their name, names specifically. I could also just do this. Here, uh, hero 1 and Hero 2. Uh, <clears throat> the difficulty with that is it's not always easy to tell who's going to be Hero 1 and who's going to be Hero 2. So, uh, but that uh, is a way to do the same thing if you're not sure who's going to be in the game, in the uh, adventure. So if I let my uh, players pick the characters, and I don't know who's going to be where, I can just, you know, still give them different dialogue by using Hero 1 and Hero 2. I can also use just the generic term Hero with no number, and that will give me a random character who will say this line. I can do the same down here with minions or villains. I can say Villain 1, Villain 8, Minion 2, Minion 11, uh, any numbers like that. Make sure that if you call a specific numbered character that you are certain that number is going to be spawned. So if you are using minions, use minion 1 and not minion 11 because your minion 11 might not get spawned if your player is playing on easy difficulty or something. In the same way, if you call villain 3, make sure there are three villains. Otherwise, your encounter will break. So, uh, the difference is, you know, if it's no the numbered one, it will use uh, a particular character. If it's not numbered, it'll be a random character. If it's the specific template, then it'll use that specific character. You don't want to try and call templates when you have multiple characters of the same type. Like, when I'm generating a whole bunch of Manhunters, I don't want to call Manhunter Robot, because that can also cause problems. Um, if you do want to add some extra specificity, especially if you want to track characters between encounters, there's another way you can do that by adding a nickname. And I'll talk about that in my uh, later in a later tutorial where I talk about how to do fancier things with EasyScript. Today we're just going to cover the basics. So, in our next encounter we can add villains, we can add minions, uh, and we have an entry for a bomb and time. So, villains, once again, it's going to be Manhattan Robots. This encounter, I want there to be a specific number in addition to whichever uh, minions are going to show up. So I'm actually going to do this. So we'll have three villain manhunters who will be uh, sort of the central figures, and then whatever the game generates in terms of minions based on difficulty. Uh, for bomb, I can come over here and go to the objects tab. For bomb, you have to choose a template that's an object from FFEdit. If you don't know what all those are off the top of your head, well, you can check out of it, or you can just come over here to this window. 
and you've got all of the different object templates, the generic object templates that show up in your FFEdit for your mod, which is pretty fantastic. It's a really easy way to look and see you know, what's available. Uh, you don't have any details on these though, so you might need to go to FFEdit to figure out what a particular object is. In this case, we're going to take uh, a bomb with a detonator. Simple enough, right? Now, if you're using your uh, vanilla Freedom Force 2 uh, objects that come uh, in the game and you're not using one of my mods as a base, pretty much any object you use should be fine. Um, however, if you're using, uh, like I do, the map pack or a lot of Freedom Force 1 objects, a lot of those don't have bounding boxes, which are the things that let an object be interacted with in FF2. So you can fix that easily enough, and I'll talk about that in a later tutorial. But uh, at the moment, if you choose an object <clears throat> and you load into your mission and you can't click on it, that's why. So just choose a different object. Uh, time, this is the time in seconds. And uh, for this, we want you know, it to be relatively tight. So we'll put it in like, we'll say 300 seconds. Uh, so uh, our players have a little time, but they do have to move pretty quickly. Now check out this. This is one of the coolest things about EasyScript. I told you that you can use um, Next to create conditional uh, movements in your uh, in your adventures, where you know um, stories can branch and stories can change within an, within a single mission, and this is how you do that. You can create conditional uh, moments in an encounter where if you win the encounter, or win the encounter particularly well, or lose it, or lose it particularly badly, uh, you can have different things happen. So uh, say you're you know, you want your players to try and disarm a bomb, and it could either, this could simply, bomb disarmed, uh, win. Or bomb exploded, lose. It can be that simple. Or it could be, uh, say you're trying to rescue an ally, and if your ally wins, then another encounter happens where uh, you get a benefit. And if the, if the uh, encounter uh, loses, if you lose the ally, then maybe something bad happens in the mission itself. Maybe you don't get information. You can actually use this uh, to create branching campaigns where different missions are spawned uh, through your choices. And we'll talk about how that is done later down the line, because that's a bit more complex. But here, we're just going to make this determine the outcome of the mission. Uh, now, uh, I can just do win and lose. However, those conditions are a little bit finicky, uh, and I don't like to go straight from an uh, encounter in which you're, the player is... is um, affecting the outcome to a win or a lose condition because sometimes they won't trigger properly. So instead what I like to do is what I've got over here. Uh, I like to jump to cutscenes that wrap the mission up uh, and that tend to play a little bit better. So I'm going to copy these two cutscenes over here to new and uh, this will trigger final one which is the win cutscene and final two will trigger if we lose and then I will drop those in down here. So all this does is it plays the scene transition, the little Freedom Force uh, shield, if uh, either way, and then it wins or loses. Uh, and I just find that adds a bit of stability to my builds. <clears throat> so I encourage you all to do the same thing. So now look at all of these different cutscenes that we have available here. We have an alert cutscene we can use. Um, the alert cutscene, as I said, will play uh, you know right as the encounter starts. In this case, we probably actually want one of these. We want to, let's come over here to our cutscene list. We want to add a red arrow on, <clears throat> uh, we can add it to a character, we can add it to an object, or we can add it to a marker. We're going to talk about what markers do uh, more in my next tutorial where I talk about how to create maps. Uh, but they're, spe they're effectively specific places on a map. So in this case, um, we are going to make sure that this encounter happens at a particular point. Uh, and we're going to point this to the bomb. And we're going to do that sort of by cheating, uh, because uh, I don't know that the uh, command would work well on the bomb itself. So we're going to put it on a marker. So uh, we can decide where our encounters happen, or we can let them happen at a random location. So if we have no indication of where this is happening, then uh, EasyScript will just choose a random location on the map based on markers already on the map. Uh, if we say 
No, not that one. But uh, oh, I forgot our uh, rescue ally encounter. I'll add that, and then I'll give it a place to have it. <clears throat> so encounter rescue cage. So we have an ally who will start caged. And I'll fix my numbering here. Little details like this, you know, fixing numbering, make sure that everything is consistent, is one of the biggest ways in which uh, things get screwed up. So, so if we include a marker entry that says this encounter happens at a particular place on the map. In this case, we'll call this marker Valley One. And we'll call this marker. This is going to be, it doesn't matter where this happens because they'll spawn someone random and come to you. This one, we definitely want to make sure it happens at a particular place. So we'll say marker uh, valley three, uh, two. <clears throat> now uh, we can just put the marker right, uh, put the arrow right on that marker. So that's going to say, um, hey players, there's something big that's over here. We can include uh, some dialogue if we want, or we can just say, put the marker there and let our players figure it out. So uh, we have all these different options. We could have a cutscene that plays as your player is trying to disarm them. You can have a cutscene that plays as it's exploding. You can have a cutscene that plays as they succeed or as they fail. In this case, we'll probably just use the um, exploding and disarm cutscenes, as well as the starts cutscene. <clears throat> And then from there, we'll have the mission end. So we now have a complete script. I could, uh, after I add my allies and my villains in here, uh, have this uh, loaded into a map. And I could run it immediately. And it would work, most likely. <laughs> There's always the chance that something would go wrong. But uh, in general, like this is, this is done. That's it. I have a complete script that I can just customize if I want to, but would function um, even if I did basically nothing else. I'm going to add the ally here, which will be one of our Green Lanterns. We'll add uh, our diamond-shaped fellow, GL Chasselon, uh, as our captured GL. So uh, pretty simple, right? And pretty intuitive. Uh, it's pretty easy to figure out how to do this stuff. Now you'll notice that um, some of these commands are in red and some of them in black. That's one of the coolest features of easy script edit. So I said, like, it's easy to make mistakes. It's easy to have typos. It's easy to just forget, you know, details and have the wrong encounter happening at the right time, at the wrong time, and things like that. So you're not just dependent on your memory, though, which is a good thing for me. Uh, these things are red because they're empty, and that and easy script detects that there's something missing there. And if we want to make sure that everything is the way it should be, we will click Analyze. And it's going to tell us everything that EasyScript Edit detects as wrong. So things that have the wrong character name. Like if we were to accidentally leave a comma there, that would get picked up. See? And you have a whole list down here, along with sort of basically what's happening, as well as uh, them highlighted in red, which is really nice to help you go back and make sure that your script is actually complete and correct. So <clears throat> we'd have to fill in all these cutscenes or simply erase them. Uh, and it's telling us that the markers we've called don't exist on the map that is currently selected. So in order to fix that, we of course have to go create a map. Uh, and we'll do that next. All right, so that is, that's the basics of EasyScript. It's, it's super simple. There's a lot more complex stuff that you can do, but uh, you can keep it as simple as you want. So uh, thank you for uh, watching this tutorial. And uh, oh, I almost forgot. You save your mission as a mission text or a story text. Story texts are used in the Rumble Room. Mission texts are used in campaigns. So I'm going to put this uh, in a particular map file. And that's uh, one of the first things you need to do when you decide sort of the mission you want to create is figure out what map you want it to go in. Uh, and 
uh, I have already chosen my map and I've already got it set up and it's 01 GL uh, DS mining colony so it's the mining colony map which is an alien uh, sort of planet uh, location which is a good place for our GL story note that I've named it with a nice simple name scheme I keep saying that but it helps me stay organized and it makes sure that nothing gets screwed up in uh, my campaigns or in uh, you know nothing causes there, there's no excuses for something not to work um, <clears throat> I like to include the map name in my uh, my map uh, my, my mission title uh, my mission folder name rather uh, just so that I can see at a glance what maps are used for which missions and it makes it easier for me to sort of mix and match things and um, you know take uh, find a map that I need uh, so once you've done that, you save it as mission text, and that's the easy script text that is used for your mission. Now let's talk about what actually needs to be uh, in that mission, that map folder to make it work though. So let's take a look at ours here. So you'll note we've got mission text. Um, we also have these Python files. These are the Python files that easy script interacts with to actually make your adventure happen. So you have to take these Python files. You can find them in uh, the Come With FFX, uh, and they are in all of my uh, EasyScript missions in all of my campaigns, all my mods. So if you've downloaded any of my mods, you'll find them in my mods. Now, um, the latest version of EasyScript is I actually have uh, some updates for EasyScript that M25 sent me before he uh, left the community that didn't get released to the whole community. And I've tried to share those out as much as I could, uh, but uh, if you want to make sure that you have the latest versions, make sure you're using those from my mods, um, and I'll also try and upload uh, a collection of them on my website as well. But uh, if we take a look at what these files actually are, you'll see basically they just call up the various scripts that M25 has written um, and sort of plugs them in to get it working for EasyScript. So, pretty simple uh, in, in appearance and very impressive in uh, results. So you have to have the combination of the Python file and the text file for things to work. You'll notice that there's also a base text and a base Python file. So mission files are the actual missions of a campaign, whereas the base files are the sort of like pit stops between the missions. Those are the places where the Freedom Force crew would get together in the base and talk about what was happening. They're the sort of cutscenes playing between your missions. This is a place where these will play before and after uh, your player has a chance to upgrade characters or to recruit new characters and things like that. Um, and in fact, there's uh, I keep remembering last details, but um, there's one last thing we can do here, since this is going to be the first mission in our campaign, our Green Lantern campaign. We can add uh, an uh, encounter that will recruit our two characters into our roster for this campaign, so that it will be available in the roster and can be chosen. Uh, so we'll add a new encounter that will start here. And I actually already have one written up over here, so I'll just copy and paste it. So this is a, a um, campaign recruit encounter. This just adds characters directly to the roster. You can also add heroes who are recruitable, but you have to buy them prestige if you use the campaign add heroes encounter. So in this case, uh, we're just going to, oh, I've misspelled Kyle's name there apparently. Uh, we're going to recruit the Green Lanterns that will be used in our first couple of missions. Uh, I misspelled his name in the... Uh, out, well, I misspelled both his name and John Stewart's name uh, in the actual uh, FF edit files, but they're, they're spelled properly in uh, the text files that actually show up in the game, I promise. Uh, so uh, this will actually add them into the roster so that in later missions where our players can choose who uh, they use, they'll have these guys as options. If I wanted to add other Green Lanterns there, I could as well. Uh, Alright, so 
now we save our work uh, and we have a completed adventure. All right, guys, so that's it for the overview of EasyScript. Uh, in my next tutorial, I'll cover how to create maps and uh, how to make them EasyScript compatible. Uh, and uh, after that, I will sort of cover how to do the really cool, fancy stuff in EasyScript that I do in some of my, some of my missions where I'm getting a little bit uh, fancier uh, because there's actually even more that you can do with it than I've covered here. All right, guys, uh, thank you for joining me, and uh, I uh, appreciate your support. Uh, please do you know try out all of these cool tools and <clears throat> tell your own stories and if you want to tell your stories with my mods feel free just give credit but tell you know new flash stories tell new thor stories go to town uh, that's why i created my mods and to give you the tools to do this kind of stuff so all right good modding bye bye